Welcome back everyone. So I noticed there was a lot of activity on my Microsoft 365 questions and answers video. So that was a video that I made where I sort of went through the questions that we might ask a potential 365 engineer. And the questions that I've been asked when I've previously gone for 365 engineering roles. I tackled about six or eight of the questions that I think were very popular uh, when I was going for a lot of these interviews and when we were interviewing previously. I think that there is a lot more. Um, because I noticed so much activity on that video, I think it's a good idea if I do another sort of part two that goes through a few more questions and answers. So sometimes you get different type of interviewers. Sometimes you get interviewers that are very technical, so they will ask a lot of questions about Microsoft 365 and a lot of questions about the technology that they're interviewing for. Other times you'll get an uh, interviewer that not so much, so maybe they're not as technical as someone else. So just in case you do get one of those more difficult interviewers, let's go through some more questions and answers and let's try and get you really prepared for that interview. So I've got a, a list of another 10 or so that we're going to go through today. Let's give it a go. Before we get started, if you like the content, you like things cloud related, you like things Microsoft related, you like technical fun, you like just general tech go around the house, give us a like, hit the subscribe button and let us know what you think in the comments below. So the first question we'll start with is a more advanced question. So this is a question that I would ask someone if they were coming for a senior 365 role or maybe even someone who is going to be a project engineer so needs to work on projects that come to the company or Microsoft 365 related stuff. And the question is more of a scenario. So I would sometimes maybe give someone a scenario. I would say there is a company called Company A and that company has purchased Company B. Now, Company A already has a Microsoft 365 subscription and they want to inherit the Microsoft 365 subscription from Company B. So this is typically a very common scenario. We get lots of companies that have done recent acquisitions and they want to merge two 365 tenants. Unfortunately, it's not actually that easy. But from a question and answer perspective, what I'm looking for is someone that maybe has had that request come up before. So someone that maybe has come across this scenario and they're able to talk about how they answered the question to their customer or to their boss or to whoever they were in the past. So the answer that I'm looking for is more around the lines of it's two separate tenants and it's two separate Active Directory environments and we need to consider the multiple domains and how we would inherit the domains and how we would merge it. So I'm not looking for an exact step-by-step -step process. What I'm looking for is someone to tell me that it's actually two completely separate tenants and that there is a bit more work involved in swallowing one whole tenant. It's not as easy as clicking a few buttons and merging it. If that person has experience with some third-party tools that let you do it with a few clicks, that's great, they can talk about that. But really when I'm asking this sort of question, I'm only expecting the person to understand the native tooling and native requirements and um, possibilities in Microsoft 365. What type of ways can you license a user in Microsoft 365? So there's many different ways that you can license a user in Microsoft 365. I just want to hear what the engineer's preferred method is. It doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong answer. As long as you can tell me about direct assignment or via group assignment, that's fine. I'm not really looking for anything particular here. I just want you to understand that there is a licensing requirement depending on what applications the user needs access to and that there is multiple ways that you can assign that license. Even if you can give a bit of the pros and cons of each way, so maybe if you tell me that you're going to do it via a dynamic group, you tell me why it's a good idea to do it via the dynamic group, or if you're going to license it via a group that's synced from on-premises, why is that a better idea? That's the type of answer I'm looking for in that. It doesn't really mean that there's a right or wrong answer, just that there is multiple answers. What is the purpose of Microsoft Secure Score? A lot of customers don't really understand what Secure Score is. Some of them don't even know that it's there. But I think it's very important that an engineer understands what Secure Score is. So if someone can tell me what Microsoft Secure Score is and what benefits it would have for the company, I think that's a really good indication of how much experience that engineer possibly has in Microsoft 365. Because at the end of the day, all of your security and all of your advisory and all of your recommendations from Microsoft sit in that secure score. And it's a really good idea if you're regularly going in there. 
So that's the type of answer I'm looking for. I'm looking for a system engineer to tell me the reason Microsoft Secure Score is a great tool for engineers is because it can give us access to security recommendations from a top sort of high level and it can give us a score of the security rating of the tenant. It also gives you the ability to see all of those itemized recommendations and how you can actually fix them to the point where some of them are even a click and fix type of scenario. That's the type of response I'm expecting. I, I really want any engineer that has applied for this role to be able to tell me what that is because I need that person to have experience there. I really rely on it a lot for our customers and I think it's great if my engineers do as well. What type of authentication methods can users have for multi-factor authentication? So Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory, they give us many options for authentication methods. For this question, I'm just looking for the engineer to sort of rattle off a few of those authentication methods. So it could be mobile app, it could be SMS notification, it could be phone call. It doesn't really matter as long as they know what some of the options are, I'm happy. And that's just because I want them to be able to answer the user's questions. So if the user calls in or the customer calls in and they ask questions about, you know, the authentication methods, I want them to be able to rattle that type of thing off the top of their head because it's really bread and butter type of thing. Shouldn't have to go into Azure Active Directory and have a look. What is the difference between the Microsoft 365 MFA, so the free one, versus the conditional access available for P1 licensed users? So this is a very common one from our customers. So I would really like my engineers to be able to answer this as well. The correct answer here is that the Microsoft 365 MFA doesn't really have that sort of conditional access type of options. So for example, Microsoft 365 MFA allows you to enforce or enable MFA and just make sure that that user gets MFA every time they try and log in on any device. So this is great for the customers who don't quite have the P1 licensing or haven't yet purchased that licensing. It's really important that they do turn it on. But conditional access also gives us the option to make conditions. So if the user is in the office, then they don't get MFA'd. If the user is using a compliant intrune device, then they don't get MFA'd. If the user is using a particular application on a particular device, then they do get MFA'd. Those are the sort of conditions we can build with conditional access. That's what I'm looking for my system engineer to understand. There is quite a difference and there is a lot of options in conditional access. So I don't expect anyone to know everything, but it's great if the engineer can talk about why it's beneficial to have conditional access over the free MFA and how we can further secure a tenant by doing so. And also actually remove a bit of inconvenience around security. Can you share files externally from Teams? This is actually a bit of a trick question because the answer is yes or no, depending on your settings. And that's the exact answer I'm looking for. So I'm looking for someone to be able to tell me that it really depends on your Microsoft Teams settings or your Microsoft 365 settings. So we can enable sharing or we can disable sharing or we can enable sharing by domain or we can enable sharing to only people that are already exist in the domain or in the tenant. It really depends on your, on your settings. And I'm actually looking for someone to be able to give me that answer. So someone to tell me it depends. Someone to tell me that it depends on your configuration in multiple environments. And, and maybe even if the engineer can talk about the compliance requirements from the business. So maybe the business isn't allowed to share externally and maybe we need to disable it. That would be a great answer as well. But anything around the, the options of sharing in 365 and against the business is great. Where can I track and trace emails? So traditionally, when we were back in Exchange on-prem, this was a bit of a trickier question because you'd have to have your Exchange console and everyone would have to have access to it so they can run the track and trace. But now it's a lot easier using the Cloud Console and I think it's much friendlier to go in there and be able to do the track and trace in the protection portal or in the exchange portal. We can do it either way. So I'm just looking for the engineer at this point to tell me that it's available in either the exchange online portal or we can do it from the protection portal. It doesn't really matter. I just want to understand that they know one of the methods because track and traces are the type of thing that come up all the time. So users calling in saying they didn't receive an email or they're trying to send an email and they're getting rejected or something like that. 
the first step of troubleshooting when it comes to that sort of thing is usually a track and trace. Can you tell me the difference between a cloud only user and a synced user? So someone with a bit of engineering experience in 365 should really understand this question very easily. There's two types of users or there is multiple types of users, but one of the two types of users you can have in Microsoft 365 is a user that's synced or sunk, sync, synchronized from on-premises or a user who is made in Microsoft 365 and we refer to them as a cloud user. So the user account can be made in both sections if you have Azure Active Directory Connect. And what I'm really looking for here is for someone to understand that there is multiple types of users. And this is important because one user, the user that's synced from on-premises, can only be managed on-premises. So their, their attributes and their information and their description, that can only be managed from on-premises. So we need the engineers to understand that that gets managed from Active Directory on-prem and that the cloud users get managed from Microsoft 365. So it's important that we sort of make sure that our engineers understand there is a difference because it comes up a lot. A lot of customers have both types of users and we need to be able to support both of them. I hope that's been pretty helpful. I really like making these videos because I feel like I know a lot about the interview process and interviewing and actually the engineering aspect of Microsoft 365. So let me know if you want to hear anything in particular. If there's any sort of role that you're going for and you really want to know a bit more about it, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I've come across it. Maybe I can make a video about it. If you do enjoy the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time.